What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the A Show with the Kings Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm Justin. Uh, of course, Meals is off this week. He had a he had a couple things he had to get take care of. Last week I had a couple things I had to take care of. So I'm taking over the show this week. No gimmicks this time. No, no, no 205 in park this time. I'm sorry. But I you know, I've really thought about bringing that back. And I actually have a guest here that might be interested in doing that. Uh, MC, what, what would you think of if we brought back 205 in Park? Let's just not do that. I think that's the better idea. I think that that was, that was bred out of quarantine and <laughs> delirium. That for sure was a COVID idea. That for <laughs> sure was, that was sprayed with COVID. <laughs> 2020 COVID, March 2020 COVID, not like the 2021 variant. Yeah, that that was definitely before Omicron. That was the what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, Tool Five and Park was a was a moment there. If you guys don't know what that is, go back in the archives. Just just Google uh, or search Tool Five and Park. It, it, I think HBO Max had just dropped, and so we were all binging Space Ghost at the time. <laughs> Space Ghosts and The Last Dance, I think. Yeah, Space Ghosts and The Last Dance, which is a crazy combo. But you know, it's 2020 for you. Yeah, it was it, it was it was one of the most ambitious episodes. I almost went crazy doing this. And of course, we got another another person tagged in. I know he's like, what the fuck? But what's up, A plus? <laughs> oh, what's going on, Five? What's the deal, brother? Nothing much. We 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 kicking the show off today. We were talking about 205 and Park, the uh the you know, one and done episode of the A show uh that had several guests <laughs> 205 and park is amazing <laughs> <laughs> but of course i have a plus and mc on the line of course these are the hosts of uh recut gems on black print uh radio network i don't know what do we call our network we just call it black print network black print network black print network yeah that, that has a ring to it i like that yeah, there it goes. The BPN. Wow. BPN, VPN. Wow. Wow. There's some synergy there. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Listen, man, I'm glad A Plus is on the line right now because have you watched Bad Boys Texas? The <laughs> this latest episode. What? I have not, but I have a funny story to tell. As I'm leaving out of Birthday Bash in Atlanta this past Saturday, we're walking down the street, right? And there's like a, what do you want to call it? I guess like an ice cream truck kind of set up. And on the side of it, it says the right way. And there's Jonathan Wright oh, no. <laughs> on the side of it, but it gets better. The, the woman I work with, my coworkers, they, they identify immediately who it is. They go over to get some footage and him and his friend starts launching wigs out of this damn van or whatever truck they're in. They're just yeah. launching wigs and a crowd starts forming around it on both sides, blocking them so they can't go forward. And on the side where the window is receiving these free wigs from Jonathan. I have not seen the episode though. And of course, you know, if you don't don't know who Jonathan is, he is the uh, the wig man for Megan the Stallion. And you know, this is purely not wrestling content, but hey, the way that he fights, you would think he was a young Vader. <laughs> <laughs> he is 90, 93 big van Vader. Yeah, the way. Listen, look up Jonathan fights on Bad Boys, and you'll see. Yeah, yes, MC. Listen, MC, you got to get on the Zeus shit, bro. Like, what's up? No, absolutely not. I was going to ask, plus, is anybody calling it the birthday bash? Because I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope I would hope people well, are using that terminology. Well, Tip did perform an impromptu performance at this year's birthday bash, by the way. It was very impromptu. He came out there, and I felt like 50 years old because King is now his hype man, and he's, like, hyping him up on stage. It was, like, the craziest thing to see. But, um, yeah, he actually performed at the birthday bash. What was the attire? Um... Regular, very regular. Had a had a you know just regular cap on, fitted on. He has dreads now, so you know just just regular like backstage. I'm chilling. Oh, y'all need me to perform? All right, come on, let's do it. Outfit. What do, the, what do the writers look like for like something like a birthday bash? Of course, if you don't know what that is, it's a huge performance in Atlanta. What what do the writers look like? The hospitality writers. It's funny you mentioned because there's like um a conversation that we had over the weekend about yo should you honor everything on here? I mean it's it's almost short of asking for like blue M and M's. Like, there's some artists who I will leave, you know, nameless, who requested, like, 25 lamb chops, like, 60 yeah. pieces of salmon. Like, uh, what? Do you think this is a steakhouse or something? What the fuck are you doing here? It's not that. So, it, it's almost like, yeah, we have to honor some of this. Like, you know, some things and other things, hey, we can get you can get that food from catering because it's there for y'all. 
Okay, that call. had to be finesse. That had to be finesse two times. 60 <laughs> Salmons had to be finesse. <laughs> I'm going to shut up and not reveal, but I'm just going to say that was a real request on the rider. I caught wind of a writer that I just saw on, on Twitter right here. I'm, I'm going to name the items, and I want you guys to guess what the writer is. Okay. <laughs> One bottle of Chase Azul, two bottles of Don, uh, Don Julio uh, or 1942, okay. uh, 12 cans of Red Bull, case of Fiji water, chilled, dressing room and on stage. Stop One- right there, Jey Uso. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one case of Coca Cola, orange juice, apple juice, assorted fruit platter. This is where it gets tricky. Popeyes, box of legs, box mixed with legs, wings, breast, white and dark meat, biscuits, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and gravy and fries. <laughs> Handheld oh. electric pen, Vaseline cocoa butter gel, degree deodorant spray, women's, 12 black <laughs> handheld towels, dressing room and on stage, three hookah flavors. Blueberry and vanilla and blueberry and mint and watermelon. Club events. 50 buffalo wings mild in to-go boxes. Club events. <laughs> to-go what? boxes. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who do you think that is? Oh, my God. Um, this is a demon, whoever this is. But uh... <laughs> Is it an artist? Yeah, it's an artist. Oh, my God. Is this like, is this Offset? I mean, I don't try to think of who the hell this is. Is that your guess? Is that your guess? The chicken might throw. The chicken might be throwing things off. That, that it's might be the chicken. It's definitely the chicken. Yeah. Women's degree throwing me off. Um, <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> are we doing women's deodorant? I thought everybody was like Dove Men's or something. Low key, or low Old key, spice. low key. I wear women's degree. I'm about to say, man, strong enough for a man, made for a woman, right? Yeah, it's, it's really? strong enough for my black ass. Yeah, it's pretty strong. <laughs> Okay, I was I was a Dove men's guy. I, I, uh... It's not strong enough for niggas though. It's not strong enough for men. Dove is not strong enough for men. Degree women's with the powder, powder fresh. That's the yeah. one. I thought Dove was for niggas. Niggas nah. not using Dove no more. It's a no. new generation. I uh, stop that. Uh, uh-uh. we using the degree, the degree, bro. Wow, this is this is actually news to me. I did not. Nobody sent the memo that niggas are not fucking with Dove no more. You didn't get the press release about the Dove. Yeah, where's the press sorry. release? I'm sorry. It's just it just is what it is. I'm not. I, I have. I've been wearing women's degree for like almost a decade now. Is it after that commercial that they uh that they had the the that they had the black woman and then she took off her clothes and it was the white woman and they tried to do the Dove ad? <laughs> No. Was it after that? Honestly, honestly, A plus had it right when it said strong enough for a man, built for women or some shit. Yeah, I, I was like, like yeah. Those catchphrases, yeah. That's a bad because here's the thing about men's deodorant. It's too musky. I don't want to smell like like fucking metal. Yes. Yeah, like <laughs> there's, a of, there's a lot of like cheap cologne smelling deodorant on the market. It's yeah, stink. I don't want to because it, it it interferes with like a lot of like the soap that I might I might you know what I'm saying. I I I, I bathe in you know what I'm saying. I, I use aloe soap now. You know what I mean? That just sound like bread. All Hold right, on. Where, where's where's the drop? <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. It's not. It's, listen, it's not up yet. <laughs> uh, the, MC, what's your what's your guess? I'm gonna guess. God, the deodorant is really throwing me off. I'm gonna um the fifty into go boxes. Who is that? Oh, the to go box. Is that crazy? Who touch. is that busy? Who is that busy? Um. Uh, who wow. would be Ain't that I busy? Know. Jesus, I don't think I'm. Uh, see, it can't be J Cole. I think uh, J Cole YG. would not want YG. YG. Oh, okay, okay, that's a good. Oh, one YG. Yes, yes. But is he that busy these days? Yeah, I don't mean to <laughs> YG. But you know what? He um, that company though. That's what. That's what I'm going for here. Who who rolls with niggas? Uh, uh, an ex, an excessive amount of niggas that need who to rolls go. with niggas. <laughs> um, <laughs> excessive. <laughs> Um. Oh, sexy red. Wow. Is sexy red? Uh, no, it's not sexy red. It's actually saucy. Ah, it's saucy Santana. Wow, oh, I was close. Wow, you in the neighborhood, low key. Damn it! <laughs> Why does he want to go boxes? <laughs> Niggas is hungry. Oh man, and and that has prompted me to 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 wonder, like, what do you think wrestlers have on their uh? On their writers, yeah, well, you, got, you got Jay Uso's part right. Wow, come on, the <laughs> chase first half. the chase is yeah. What do you mean? I, I don't think he's drinking no chase is old. This like I feel like this is like just hef- hefty amounts of protein on the rider, like all grilled chicken breast and shit. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, just like yeah. protein. Yeah, I, I I would imagine that. I would think Seth Rollins would have like uh like all types of waters, coconut waters and shit like that. Right. Uh uh LA Knight. He probably wants the blue MMs pieced out. <laughs> right. Honestly, he, you know, the weirdest thing is like socks. Like they could just be asking for shit that they need <laughs> on the rider. Yeah, like they ask for shit like this on a target run. You're right. People are asking for toiletries on some riders I heard about over the weekend. Like toiletries, seriously? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, um, I was I was working a school uh, a college event in uh, Tyga, of course. Uh, was was performing at our uh, VCU. I don't know if you remember this A plus. Okay, it's the homecoming concert. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, and um, he wanted underwear. I said, nigga, okay. you could just go get underwear. You could just literally have any of your niggas go get you underwear. Like, yo, imagine and, calling Tyga back, like, yo. What size again? Is it is it 32, 36? Or like, what the <laughs> fuck are we doing here, man? What color, bro? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the hell? I know I lost weight. You know it's a 26, nigga. Come on, stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, you got to think, like, what does Cody have on his rider? Wow, Cody. Cody's rider. Um, Damn, what would he want? Cody's he rider. Want? He would it's probably... Something- he would probably want uh, uh, cherry bombs for sure, just so he could practice. Um, he would definitely need dog food because to bring you know for his dog and shit. Yep. Yep. Uh, I see. He definitely needs some like protein powder or some shit like that. He's definitely doing that. Uh, he wants an eagle. I would imagine he would want a bald eagle on his rider. <laughs> it's a bald eagle on a rider. That's hilarious. Bald eagle on the rider. Uh, what else would Cody want on his rider? Uh, uh, more sequins for his cast, as we see this yeah. week. The, the cast has seemingly more sequins on it this week than it did last week. Um, but then lapels, we, lapel, yes, that that too yeah, for yeah. for yes. for his robe. Uh, I mean, let's let's get to the women too. What would like uh, what would uh, what would me and Yim want on a rider? Wow. What does me and Yim request? Uh, he wears a. <laughs> <laughs> she wears a blue bandana. It's blue, right? It's blue. He's crippled. Okay, just making sure. I was like, making what, sure. What does Chelsea Green have on her rider, bro? Oh, Chelsea Green. Oh man, yo, like you know what I mean? Like she's like, I read the uh, forecast for Lafayette, and it said uh, the air is uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups, so I'm going to need a humidifier. <laughs> oh my god! I, I really, I really, really liked the. Uh, the, and I, I'm bringing this up now because I'm probably going to forget later. That vignette that was about her this week. That was amazing. Amazing. TikTok, that was great. I think that they really have a plan for her. And I, I'm i I'm all for what it is. And I think that this act is going to be pretty well served as a baby face. I really think it would be great if she was a baby face doing that to heels. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I loved how how they mixed in some Taylor Swift stuff to keep it like you know realistic or whatnot. It, it was just great all the way around, in my opinion. Some of the voiceovers, the yeah. uh, it was it was just oh man, it was just well put together. Absolutely. Yeah, scanning through scanning through TikTok actually did surprise me. I'm like, wow, we really are in a new generation because it could have just been Chelsea TikTok, then another Chelsea TikTok, then another Chelsea TikTok. But then they had like actual organic TikToks mixed in. Mm-hmm. I was trying to see what the vision was there, but it was just like scrolling through a feed, and I'm like, wow, this really is 2023. Seriously, yeah. there was definitely a Gen Zer on the on the uh, in the production team doing that because it was like they did the search, and then they had all of the videos that were related. You notice, like, there were videos that were kind of related to, you know, TikTok will give you a couple that are related and one that's just, like, not at all, just to kind of, uh, t- to give your, your algorithm a gut check to see if you actually click into that actual account. But it was yeah. it was interesting how they did all of that. And, and again, like, I think she's looking way better than, uh, I mean, Sonya Deville looked lost out there this week. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sonya. She looked lost against Caden and, uh, and, and, and what's, her, what's her face. I always get, oh, it was Katana. I hate Katana. Katana Chance. I get that mixed up. I get that mixed up bad. Bad name. It's a bad name. But look, where that's it. But let's get into the into the wrestling here. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty light week for all things considered. Think about where we were last year, right? Last year we were deep at this point into Sasha Gate. We were maybe a month into Sasha Gate, and we were maybe no, we weren't. Were we? We, uh, Stephanie had already stepped down a week a, a year ago today. Or a year ago at this at this point. She had already stepped down. Yeah, we're in June. The beginning of the summer? 
It it was I was on my honeymoon when she stepped down. Oh wow. Yeah, it was that Saturday, I think. Or Friday. It was that Friday that she stepped down, I think. I I don't have it. Like, hey, y'all, she was like, hey, y'all got it. Y'all gonna have to figure this out for the summer. Summer slam, that's on y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and hit back to the crib, chill out. Cause then the uh because what what was the order of, the, of, of things that happened? Sasha leaves, and then three weeks later, uh no wait, no, no, no. Yeah, Sasha leaves in the week after that, because it was Monday, and then days after that, Stephanie stepped down, right? Yeah, because May, May 19th, she tweeted that she would take a leave of absence. Yeah, I was still on my honeymoon at that point. Um, because we had got to because it was Monday she left, Friday Stephanie left, and I was like, what the fuck is going on with this company? And then <laughs> Yeah, that, that is crazy. That is that is not that's not how, how much that happened. Like la- this time last year, possibly the craziest time in this generation of wrestling, right? Where it was like, yo, Vince left, Stephanie left, Triple H is in charge of creative. Uh, they're gonna sell the company. Uh, brawl out happens, and now a year later, we're seeing the kind of like the 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 out you know the outcome, the aftermath of all of this. And one of these aftermaths is um, CM Punk's return to wrestling last weekend at AEW's first show, C- Collision. Uh, Saturday at 8 p.m. Uh, on it's on TNT, right? It's on TNT. Yep. yep. Uh, so that that emanated from uh, the United Center, but of course, before that, you had the tease of a crazy interview that was supposed to come out with CM Punk talking about what happened and saying some not so nice things about Hangman Adam Page, which ended up being a lot more kind of flaccid than people were expecting. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't really juicy at all. It almost felt like the um, you know certain members of the wrestling journalism community. We're trying to, you know, cut the legs off, so to speak, or get ahead of a story that wasn't really that much of a story other than it's Phil saying things he means. And it's just like, oh, God, prepare for it to be, quote, another one of those weeks in AEW. And it felt like it was like, OK, this is, these are things he's pretty much just, you know, confirming we already thought he felt. So it really wasn't that much of a story. Yeah. And and, and I mean, it, it's I feel like they're trying to recapture the eyes and the engagement that they might have got on brawl out right where it's yeah. like it, it, you get you had months and months of conversation about what happened what's going to happen is he coming back is he not coming back is he fired is he not fired and then it's led us <clears throat> to this point here where you know almost a year later CM Punk has finally returned he has his own show with wrestlers that seemingly are ones that are cool with him and that want to work with him or work in the same locker room with him and you still have a locker room that is divided. So going directly to AEW Collision, two-hour show. I've heard lots of reviews about this and seen a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people saying it's restoring the feeling. Oh, it's up again. AEW might got something with this. And I'm like, I y'all got to pump the brakes. Like, I understand people want to see this company succeed. You have to give it a couple weeks. You really have to wait and see what the way that the, the, these people operate. I yeah. seen a I seen a meme. I, I don't even know where I seen this meme. You know, I usually see the oddest memes. It was a Kevin Hart meme that said, "This is A W collusion. We joke around this motherfucker. Take your sensitive <laughs> ass back to dynamite if you ain't feeling it." I'm like, "Wow, that is what the that is what the divide is here." I'm not yeah. really that tapped into A W. So I'm like, "Wow, this is where I did not know that was a divide between the fans like this." It's crazy because A W has done something that WWE tried to do back in the early 2000s <clears throat> and that is create tribalism within their own uh within their own fan base yes, mm-hmm. yes. And, and i think that what's what's happened here is that like w, wwe realized maybe that's not the smartest thing to do like is to have our fans act, actively rooting for like raw or smackdown to fail because in the end we got to make money with this shit so maybe once a year we can have the fans pick but i mean ultimately a survivor series at these points like None of us are choosing Team Raw or Team SmackDown. We're just choosing Team Best Story, right? Like we don't want, we don't, you know, we don't really care about the the brand supremacy. But in storyline, that's what it is. This is not a storyline. This is legitimate groups of of fans that look at Collision as the real show and Dynamite as the falsified or false show. Whereas mm-hmm. if one of these shows fails, they all fail. You know what I mean? It's still the same company. So they they've done something that is insane. And I think Tony has to, Tony Khan has to really look at himself and, and and I would say be careful, but it's too late. The you know, you can't put the the toothpaste back into the tube, so to speak, at this point, because he's actively allowed this type of shit to happen. 
and, and a couple of things about Tony, right? Like if this is storytelling in one, it's it's awful storytelling. Just just put that out there. It's piss poor storytelling to say that, you know, we're going to pull something from, you know, in real life, but we're not going to really address it head on. But hey, everybody in this room knows what we're talking about, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's awful shit storytelling, okay? Yeah. And then secondly, what on God's green earth compelled Tony Khan to run a live program, a wrestling program, weekly at Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Like, even Jim Crockett Promotions had the wherewithal to go, I mean, we should probably put this on the 605 because motherfuckers are going to go outside at 805. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that is insane to me in 2023 that he's going to probably have to rely on DVR watching, live plus DVR ratings to really tell the true story about Collision. And, it, and it's strange, right? Because... Of course, you have this Saturday show, but you also have it running head to head potentially. Like they, they're actually missing a bullet. They're 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 dodging a bullet uh, on on July first because Money in the Bank is going to be uh, much earlier in the day, and Collision yeah. will be later in that day. So they're dodging a bullet there. But I think you know, as it comes to like the fast lane that just got announced for October, um, payback is in September. All of those are going to be on Saturday. Those are going to be at the regular time, and oh, yeah. you best believe SummerSlam, for example, yeah. and best yeah. believe. They are going to be front loading and powering these shows with with big matchups that I just don't think AEW can compete with uh, outside of their actual body of, of of fans, which, as Mark pointed out, are now divided. So now you think their fans are going to be like, I don't fuck with Punk. I'm not watching Collision because they've told me not to fuck with Punk, and they've yep. made it seem like I should not watch anything he's part of. So I'll go ahead and watch the WWE pay per view, or what, or or better than that, I'll go outside. <laughs> and then you have the same people <laughs> on the collision side that'll say, I'm not watching on Wednesday. F- fuck that. I'm not, I'm going to do that. Cause the thing is, 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 is you two, right. Is like, where are these fans going to funnel to? They're either going to mm-hmm. stop watching altogether. Some of them might not go to WWE again. Some of them might go back to, to WWE more than, more than they did before, mm-hmm. but you're funneling these fans in all types of different ways. You're not hurting them. Like you should like the, as, as much as you, you know, people want to talk shit about the universe part of the, of, of, of that company. They've done that to create a brand where you're actually you're inside of the ecosystem and they make fans feel aspirational or a part of their brand marketing wise. That's why they call it the universe. That's why you're a part of the universe. I do it for the universe. They don't say the people. They say the universe. Right. That's part of that aspirational marketing where it's like you're part of that. You're part of that. Meanwhile, AEW is feeding you. Oh, we're not going to tell you why CM Punk is off, but he's going to go on TV and call the call the EVPs of the company. Uh, what, what did he say? Counterfeit bucks. Yeah. Yep counterfeit bucks and this it's insane that 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 promo i i feel crazy watching that promo and seeing what he does and i'm like you know <laughs> they say that they say that he had to get that approved uh plus so what do you feel about that that's so interesting right it's like you know he's gonna take this jab he's like he's talking to tony and tony you know he's probably telling tony you know i gotta talk about him there's no way i can go out there and not talk about him and tk's probably nodding his head like yeah you're right you're right you're right so again He's the guy who's fueling all this at the end of the day. The same man who could have kiboshed it is the same guy who's fueling it. And that is just insanity. Yeah, it, it's, it is him stoking the flames, him coming out at the beginning of the show. You've got all of Chicago saying, fuck the Bucks. And, and again, guys, they have they now, they, they, <laughs> they, yes, <laughs> they have now stoked the flames where the Bucks and the Elite are not going to be on Dynamite in Chicago this week. Yeah, they got pre-tapes, right? I've heard that they're, they're going to be a part of the show via pre-tapes, which is very interesting. You know, they were very confident coming back in when they knew he wasn't around. And they were, you know, telegraphing spots from the alleged brawl out and all that yeah. crap. Now they're going to do pre-tapes? I mean, that, that is very interesting. So so they're going to do pre-tapes. But, but bigger than that, you guys, is that they've now splintered their fans in the cities that they travel to. So now the Bucks can't go to Chicago anymore. Punk probably can't go to California anymore without getting booed. It is... It's bonkers. And I don't know if there's a way to r- rectify this, you know, as the show goes on. I can't say that I'm waiting for it, but I'm not going to be surprised if fan cam footage just rolls out one day on Twitter where there's just some concourse brawl between like some punk fans and the elite fans. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, you're, you're, I'm, I'm pretty sure punk wants the elite to be lost in the submarine with those other people right now. Um, <laughs> you know what? As- <laughs> oh man but as far as the actual show of collision on saturday night um i've seen i've seen a lot of people again these, these are people that have, have not been on tv for a while they haven't been featured correctly 
or featured at all in, in some cases you, you you had a lot of people saying you know the, it was a solid to to good to great show from a lot of people and that's what you want to do for the first show of a new series right you they they have to do something like that you know when ratings notwithstanding we don't know when, when will those come out do you know I okay. believe it delayed just because of the holiday uh, yesterday, but I think we'll receive them later today. Okay. Because they had like some type of overnight number. I saw, don't know the source, but I saw it on like the For You tab, of course, on Twitter where all truth lies. But um, it was like 8.14. I think they said it was a fast national, which I don't know if that's correct or not, but I did say it, was, it would come in around 7.75. So that's kind of the neighborhood of what I'm thinking for the premiere episode. Is that a L knowing that that's kind of your ceiling? That is the ceiling. Eight, the 800 club is the AEW fan base, man. Like, is that a failure to you guys if it doesn't hit a million? Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say a failure because I know that there's going to be a lot of fans that are going to try and stay away from the drama and be like, oh, well, we don't have to buy into the programming that they're giving us. Just watch it on Wednesday, watch it on Saturdays and enjoy great wrestling. So I'm sure there's going to be fans that, you know, are not too invested in the numbers and just want to watch all the programs. For my interest, I actually am pretty curious to see how it goes down when Collision, let's say, gets its legs and becomes not even as popular, but maybe even more popular than Dynamite. Do they actually start going into areas of doing a official, uh, an unofficial draft? Do they start doing collision-based shows? I know the shows between AEW are not monthly like they are within WWE, but would they ever start doing brand-specific programs like how they did in 2003 and start doing things for collision and things for Dynamite? I guess it would only, I guess time would only tell as, this gets and it ends up being a little more popular. I just think, again, the grounds is brown. This quote unquote brand split is founded on is just like just terrible. I'm not sure just this bag on AEW the whole time, but it's like you have Dynamite, which we would guess is the brand of the founders, the elite. And then you've got the collision brand, which is just the people who are mad at me and won't come to work. Like that is just a crazy like brand split just on paper. Yeah, I mean, the show had people like Miro on there. It had Andrade making his return. It's just insane. <laughs> I think he's been gone that long, making his return uh, in, in a pretty well received match with uh, Buddy Mur or uh, Matthew. Sorry, don't want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a pretty good match, right? Uh, you you kind of expect that um, from those two guys, but that's the once again the story of AEW. I would never say the the in ring um, probably is awful at times. It can be, but it's you know it's typically decent to good some in, in their main event matches. But um, that isn't the story. The story matters more than. What's happening? You know, if you don't, if you don't have a good story, then I could care less about what's happening in the ring. Simply put, yeah, exactly. And I mean, it gets you to again a, another story based, which with a story based without the story <laughs> match uh, <laughs> in the main event. Uh, it was it was CM Punk and FTR. Uh, CM FTR, I believe, is the yep. name. Of it. Yep, Comforter is the name. <laughs> Comforter. <laughs> comforter. Think about it. Hey, we got a piece of fans. Comfort. This is the comfort show. Think about it. <laughs> comforter is it oh, against, against Bullet Club Gold and Samoa Joe. 30 minute tag team match to end the show. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna call it right now. I think this probably sank the show at the end. At the end, <laughs> I believe it. I believe because once again, why are you going 30 minutes on a six man tag? Like it's so it's ridiculous, man. Once again, you're you're going off the fact that you know CM Punk and FTR are cool because you watched uh Dax Harwood podcast with Matt Coon, or you not you know you know about Punk and Joe's history because you were a fan of ROH nearly nearly 20 years ago. Like it's so insider, and you have to have a fucking glossary if you're just a casual fan to enjoy this shit. You're right. He shoots himself in the foot with stuff like that. Yeah. I'm about to say, yeah, the Ring of Honor didn't pop. The Ring of Honor didn't pop you as a as a as an ROH guy. You didn't like the stare down. <laughs> Here's, the thing. Here's the thing with that stare down. It's a cool moment, but that's all this is. Is just moments. It's it's like think about the amount of times you've you've seen you've seen or heard a god level pop. You just heard one almost seven days ago, five days ago on right. SmackDown. Mm -hmm. God level pops that just keep happening this year. <laughs> they keep happening. Even even Tommaso Ciampa got a fucking crazy pop last night. Solid pop. They did like like it, it, it with the old music, right? Like Sammy when he comes out with the old music, that pop. All of this. You think about all of those all of those moments. How how do they measure up to a stare down between like two dudes in their forties? You know what I'm saying? Like how does it measure measure up to that? Like it, it's like it, it would have been cool if they did that. 
when Punk first got there. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? Like it, it would have been cool if these things happened already or they happened in a vacuum. But knowing that this is kind of like the consolation feud that he's that he's getting because he's not going to be able to work with any of like the guys people actually want to see him work with anymore. It kind of kind of sold it a bit for me. Like I'm like, okay, Punk versus Joe, two guys past their prime. I know Joe passed his prime. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Hogan, Hogan Piper, Star K96. It's what this is, man. Just yeah, to a, you know, a little bit more narrow crowd because, of course, they was on the indies and they they killed it. But that's what this is, man. That's what it and that's what it looks like. It, it looks <laughs> it, it it looks like some you know trying to relive their glory days type shit, right? And and again, Punk looked a bit rusty for you know the priest the pieces that he was in the match. He wasn't in there you know a lot of the time. He had he had a lot of really good kind of counter spots with Jay White and stuff like that. In the end, they do get the win, but then it's like you know. There's nothing announced for this week on Collision at all, by the way. So I'm guessing you have to watch the Wednesday show, right? Oh, that, wow. they, that they have patterned you not to watch. Remember, because that's the show Punk's not going to be on, but he's going to be on it this week in order to find out what's going to be out on, on Saturday. And that's, that's what's giving Rampage to me. Yeah. And, and you know what? Kind of like those early Rampages where, of course, Punk debuted on, I believe, the CM Punk uh, Eddie Kingston promo was on Rampage. So you're right. It's definitely turning into a super Rampage. That actually and, also does remind me. I saw the clip that said CM Punk, hey, I'm still the AEW world champion. You're going to have to take it from my cold, bloody hands. Is that how's they, How are they going to play that? I'm guessing you're probably going to get the collision bit. You're going to get that brand split because Tony's saying, oh, I'm not really calling it a hard brand split, but you're going to have to. It seems as though those those bridges won't be mended anytime soon, if ever. Um, so I would imagine you're going to get a uh, maybe a Punk versus MJF match where MJF wins and then Punk eventually gets his own title um, yep. on, on, on collision. My thing is this. Punk should have came back as a heel. I'm going to keep it 100. He really should have. Really you should have came back as a heel. All this babyface shit is just rings so hollow to me, knowing the way that like all this shit went down. Like he absolutely came off as the best heel in the history of wrestling a year ago in that press mm-hmm. conference. And you come yeah. back and have him be a babyface again, like kind of throwing shots at that. Like you come back and you heal on the established order. The 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 elite are babyfaces right now. Then you heal you heal on them. You yeah. have to now you have a baby face that people love, the people's, you know, chosen guy healing against them but baby facing against everyone else it makes no sense <laughs> you know maybe this is a whole like uh how tony treats mjf in long island where he just basically plays a straight baby face even though everybody knows his character maybe that's what they're going for here because i mean toronto i can't imagine that it'll be as overwhelmingly positive as it was in chicago come this saturday even you know of course maybe you know a little different on this wednesday but yeah I- it would make perfect sense for him to be a heel, especially how you you know play the uh, beginning of the promo where he takes the AEW mic flag off, similar to how he took that uh, WWE mic flag off ten years ago, I believe, in his uh, promo leading up to Rock uh, match at uh, Royal Rumble. So yeah. there's a comment right there, and he was definitely a heel in that program. So you know, we'll see. Yeah, um, there's some there's some uh, reports from Fightful about uh, about the response to the CM Punk promo. Uh, he said there was some cage rattling due to uh, Punk's promo at the start of the of the, of the broadcast. Uh, he points out that individuals behind the scenes took note of Punk removing the AEW cube that was wrapped around the microphone, something he previously done with a WWE microphone cube while working for them. It said that people felt Punk was getting out what he needed to get out, while others believed it was hypocritical of the former champion to make a comment about fan favorites in the locker room being soft after he became upset about his on-screen rivalry with, with Adam Page. It's noted that a non-disclosure ag- agreement was not put into place between Punk and Page, whereas one was applied to Punk in the Elite regarding their uh, their real life fight um sure <laughs> <laughs> just it just reeks of embarrassment though when it comes to talking about the bucks it's like uh, i think we're doing so much by talking about it like this and they've allowed it to happen like this where it has become this moment in time that we can't get past because they're just like refusing to talk about it like they had that whole aew all access show where they keep talking about you know one of the worst moments in our careers and we won't ever get over it or live it down and nobody ever references what that is. Because once again, you got to refer to your AEW special glossary that you can purchase on the rest of the Observer newsletter uh, message board. <laughs> exactly. But, um, it's just ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. So uh, as this continues on, uh, Collision has about 800 people that are going to show up to the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> Doing numbers like gangbusters, I'm telling you. Over oh, like no. 
so so we'll see what happens with them. But I have a couple of quick hit news here. Uh, Cameron Grimes was on uh, the the uh, the KP and Graves led out of character podcast. They're a lot nicer to each other on that podcast than they are on Monday nights. KP's a lot tolerable on that podcast. I give him credit. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. So yeah, I've yeah. heard. Oh my god! Come on, MC. So I've heard. Come on, hey. MC. Come on, MC. Putting my, putting my Drewski hands up. <laughs> They talk about uh, they talk about uh, Cameron Grimes' disappearance from WWE television uh, from November 2022 all the way up to May here, and he says the uh, you know he had, he was asked about it and he says um, you know he basically was saying that uh, if you watch our product in the last year, it's incredible, it's on top of its game. Uh, but he said you know it would be insane to say you know what let's cut five minutes from the Bloodline segment to establish Cameron Grimes. He says it was all it was all timing and I definitely took down that down period and got in the best shape of my life. And uh, he said, you know, he he intends to uh, to keep it keep it where it is. Um, he says, I'm at the pinnacle now. I'm at the top. And he said, there's no higher. The only thing I could do is stay here and try to make the most out of it. And I've been questioning on the show for a while. Where the hell was Cameron Grimes at? And it's odd to me, not odd, but it's actually kind of like interesting to me that he would be candid about that. But also like he never went to Twitter. He never went to social media. He never complained. He never said anything about the fact that they were holding him back for so long. And I wonder if that actually bodes well for him in terms of like just being a company man and, and the way they're pushing him now. Yeah, it does speak volumes. You know, I mean, you, you sometimes you see in that situation where you might want to start a grassroots campaign where it just isn't any time for you on the show. And if there is time for you on the show, will it even be substantial to where you could, you know, it could lead to something? You know, you don't want to be just, you know, getting, the, as my brother MC would say, a mat tan every week. You know, how does that help you? <laughs> hey, he escaped the mat tan with, uh, with, um, with Corbin. He's right. escaping with Corbin. He's good. Yeah, he, he absolutely did. I, and and again, like I I feel like they look at it's always like the test being in the E, right? It's it's, it's always a test. It's always like ah, you know, we, they're gonna test you. And and you know, regardless of whether you think is right or not, I feel like in Cameron Grimes' case, I was like I would have actually loved to see him on TV a lot earlier than the draft. I was fantastic. I was super happy when he got drafted uh, two months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that. You know, it, you can see the, you know, the way he's, he's built now. He, he's like definitely he's cut, bro. Like he looks crazy. Yeah. He was locked in. Yeah, he was locked in. Like he, he's 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 definitely at the top of his game and they're putting him right there. And I've said this before on the show. I feel like this is like the best draft class that they've ever done uh, that I've ever seen, at least where in terms of establishing people out, off the jump, out the gate, making them seem like they're important, giving them video packages even when they're not going to be on TV. And even if they're not if, if they're not going to be on TV, putting them in segments with, with 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 top guys, you know, like Finn and JD. You know what I'm saying? Like like it looks like they have something coming up with JD McDonough, right? But they say, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to hold you off for now until it's time. And I think that that's what's important because Vince would just throw your ass out there to the, to the wolves. And if you didn't get over, your ass is out. Right. Right. Sink or swim, pal. You know, it's just an old way of doing things. But I mean, look at Pretty Deadly. They just hop right into the mix. They look like they belong. Um, I mean, everybody else, they pretty much added on TV with regularity. Looks like they belong. So you're right. Even the free agent thing that didn't make sense on its face, the days of the draft, makes sense now. So I, I think they're doing a great job. And it's paying off. I mean, Baron Corbin is, is they're trying to get him heat. <laughs> He's, <laughs> right. I mean, hey, even Ali. Ali looks like a, a way more credible person going back to NXT and kind of being a big dog down there from week to week. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's get into SmackDown. Let's do it. From the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. What a strange place to do this angle that they do on the show. Oh, my God. They're in Lafayette this upcoming Friday. I'm like, yo, what? Is, who is doing the booking these like these days? I have no clue. But I'm like, I get that they have to get this shit has to move. Because they have a pay per view in a couple of weeks, but God, they, they didn't deserve this. Ohio, <laughs> Ohio didn't deserve Monday. Wow, <laughs> I don't want no beef. I don't want no beef with the Kentuckians. Not that I'm going to be in Kentucky at any point in time soon, but come on, you think they deserve this 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 final angle that uh, that happened on this show? They've been in the heartland for weeks now, fam. Were they just like in Wichita last week? <laughs> Wichita, Kansas. I will say this. I will say this. I'm glad that nobody picked up on what they were doing. And Wichita, I'm glad no one picked up on that, and they they kind of left that as its own anomaly of of that gotcha. night. But um, SmackDown this week, I thought it was a good show. I thought both shows this week were were great to fit great good to great shows this week. Um, SmackDown opened with a tag team gauntlet match, uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, geeks versus people that they're <laughs> trying to push. 
<laughs> it was a little mix there. It was a mix. Uh, LWO Geeks, OC Geeks. <laughs> wow. Uh, sh- uh, shit Row versus the Brawling Brutes and Pretty Deadly. So that was pretty much <laughs> your team. So right two out of five there. there. That's right. Two out of exactly. five. Uh, you had you had the you had the Bros, the 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 Banger Bros, the Bang Bros. Uh, yeah. Looking, looking dominant for about twenty minutes until Pretty Deadly came in and did what they what, what they're doing. What do you guys think about the Pretty Deadly push uh, that, that, that that has been happening for the past three weeks? We we've all said that they've been main roster ready, but God, they they seem to be putting the rocket straight to them and, and, and blasting them off. I enjoy it, man. I think it puts off some people, uh, especially the podcasting community. One one Jim Cornette maybe may not be able to see the uh, value in Pretty Deadly because of how they uh, appear to look, maybe. But um, no, I think I've, I've watched some bits and pieces in NXT, and I've always been impressed with their work in the ring, and it's paying off. Like you said, they are really getting the strong vote of confidence from creative right now. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think, MC? Especially for those that you know are big fans of 2000s tag teams, I know that there were tweets that have said that this reminds people of like a little bit more of a flamboyant Edge and Christian. You know, yeah. those things are, yeah. I would say those things are pretty appropriate. Not to say that th- these are going to end up being the bigger solo solo careers, just like how Edge and Christian had. But, you know, from a tag team perspective, they do have that type of synergy that you would have expected from those early 2000s tag teams. So I think that's what draws a lot of people that do want to watch this tag team wrestling and trying to have those moments that they did have back in those um, early Attitude Era days. So I think Pretty Deadly has been doing well with that. And for the most part, I would say those that watch Pretty Deadly and enjoyed Pretty Deadly kind of saw these glimpses being able to come out in nxt you just wanted to see it in a bigger stage like how it is on friday night smack now absolutely and now they have a match at, at the o2 against the undisputed tag team champions ko and Sami Zayn. this this got banger all over it bro this got show stealer all actually all over it because it's it, it's a big stage we know what pretty deadly is capable of we know what sammy and ko are capable of this this could be this could be really good guys I'm looking forward to it. Like you said, I think, do you think this may be something that opens the show? I think you open with the money in the bank, honestly, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's their first time, at the, they say first time doing this pay-per-view out of, you know, out of the States. And then you just, open, you, you crack it open with the money in the bank, open it with the women's one. I, I think the positioning of these money in the bank matches are going to be, are going to be quite telling too, right? Where it's like, what's going to go first? And how is that going to play into the rest of the night? Because you know the men usually don't cash in the same night the women do so will they continue that trend or will they will they let it chill for that night hmm i'm i'm going to be anxious to see how that rolls because you're right i don't know how that will flow especially with how one side of the women's championships is looking between you know bianca and charlotte that, that has to be built into like what like a triple threat at SummerSlam. you think right yeah i i wouldn't do that i wouldn't pull the trigger on that the same night but with the man it's like i mean roman's in a tag match that night you know what i mean <laughs> like like right. Seth is facing off against Finn Balor on there. There's, there's, there's a lot of openings where that could happen, especially if somebody from Judgment Day wins uh, on the men's side. But uh, moving on on SmackDown, you had EO Sky and Bailey. They're starting to kind of fall apart here. Um, do you feel like they're they're kind of they're they're letting us breathe a little bit? Do you feel like they should speed it up a little bit? I'm, I'm like the, the little teases and having these two lose all the time. I'm like I'm, I'm wondering what the what the big turning point is going to be. I wonder if the Dakota injury kind of stalled things or the plans rather for uh, damage control here. Cause you're right. It seemed like they're kind of in a holding pattern here. They try to stretch out the descent between Bailey and EO a little bit. And I wonder if Coda kind of, you know, mixed that up a little bit. Especially with the way that it's going to tie into money in the bank. There's been so many different scenarios that they tie in on the two people or the duos that are going into money in the bank that can possibly have some type of, collusion or even break up at this at this point in time and obviously that's what people are waiting for for july once uh eo and bailey make their way into money in the bank but who knows i I think i think for the most part people want to see damage control excel in ways that they haven't been within the past couple months especially since royal rumble i keep thinking back to that royal rumble and like man they really controlled that rumble and knocked out like 14 15 different (laughs) women and now it's a it's a it's a much different uh it's a much different experience than how it was in january yeah, now, and now you have the possibility that Bailey will be out of the match with her going against Shotzi next week. Um, I, I think you do it. I think you. I think that becomes a turning point. Is Bailey getting knocked out of that match? I think she's more. She's been more than willing to show that she will, you know, take one for the team uh, and and put somebody over. But Shotzi, this seems like a match that's like just built for her to do something stupid in. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. she, she I would hope we don't get a senton from that ladder. 
oh, you know what's going to happen if, if, if she's in that match. But the thing about that is that Bailey doesn't have to be in the match to be in the match. She could still be out yeah. there. So like, I, I would definitely... Exactly. Like, I, I would definitely still have her have her there. Um, hey, man, favorite part of the show. Favorite part of the show right here coming up. 4K gang. Ah, gang. Ah. Mm. All right, bro. 4K ah. gang in the building. <laughs> Y'all really repping that heavy? Y'all really repping that heavy? Is four is four K gang that deep? Hey man, ah. yeah. we keep we keep it four K over here. You feel me? Well, hey, we we have a tarot card for you soon, Mark. Keep playing, man. <laughs> you know I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. There's something about. I, I, I'm not a carrying. Ha- I'm not a carrying hater. I'm putting my juicy hands up. I'm not a carrying hater. <laughs> Just that second range is still. Uh, the second NXT championship range still has me a little bit sour. But you know what? I'm I'm open. I'm open to. I'm open to ideas. Him and Scarlet against AJ Styles and Mecha and whatever. Listen, man. <laughs> what is that? AJ, AJ hit. Scarlet with the I'm married bitch and I said whoa this thing is <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't any married man do the same when looking no. at a Scarlet type no I wouldn't I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like excuse me excuse me uh you know white woman I have to uh fight you know the opponent 4k Karen Cross Coven uh representing uh <laughs> I have to fight the opponent y'all hear this <laughs> That's very much SmackDown versus Raw talk right there in the captions. <laughs> Crazy man, there can't be a single listener that buys that. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. I have to fight <laughs> on the shoulder. Well, but here's the thing, man. You, you, you too, he too heavy in it. Like, like, nigga, you've been married twenty years. You think you don't know? Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> Well, she chance. How many t- oh well she probably knows the Wendy promo, just Wendy. like a lot of Twitter does. We all know Wendy, man. Get the fuck out. Ain't nobody worry about no goddamn Wendy, man. Get the fuck out. <laughs> what if she said what if she what if she said that on TV though? <laughs> Ain't nobody about no goddamn Wendy. And then turn around and get the fucking gets choked out. <laughs> oh man. Uh Kelly, uh uh Karen gets uh distraction uh from from Mee Chen, uh who was who was facing Scarlet that gets uh AJ Styles putting a choke and then putting some strange move. I, I sent him this move from 2K, so I'm not gonna be mad. <laughs> At the finish, uh, it looks like they're trying to try some different things with his finish. He has about five of them, so he needs to actually consolidate his finishers right now. But what so, can we uh, call this? Like the the ah uh, ah uh, the modified F five, like I five. I don't know what we call this thing, man. Call it, call it the K five. K five, there it is. K five. K five. He can hit him with the K five. All right. I hate him. <laughs> um we have a strange promo with uh with santos escobar and, and la Knight and all of this coming out listen santos go ahead and just turn on him bro please please <laughs> already, man. because you're not like we we all know you're not his son fam you're acting like you're out here being the extra the extra kid you can't be an extra daddy i'm sorry yeah <laughs> extra daddy. <laughs> listen man I, it's just not believable to me for him to be this excited about a grown ass man that is only about four years older than him, bro. <laughs> He's a legend. <laughs> Wait, is Ray really four years older than Santos? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Listen, Santos is in his forties, bro. I'm about to hit the courts on this. Let's. Jesus Christ, thirty nine. <laughs> He's thirty nine. Yes. Oh, Ray's forty eight. Okay. Oh, phew. I was about to say, don't tell me you were 21 watching WCW Santos. I would have looked at you differently. <laughs> Halloween Havoc, you were Halloween Havoc, you were getting a car, you were getting a car and getting right. The, 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 don't let me find that out, Santos. Listen, man. He, it's it's just not believable for him to be this goddamn excited about Ray goddamn Mysterio, man. Just turn on him already. Please. Uh, just, just, just take the L's and be like, Ray, man, you ain't never helped us do shit. Maybe Dominic was right, and then just fuck his, <laughs> fuck his ass up. But then that gets people the heel LWO that they want. I'll give us Lucha suits back. I want the Legato theme. Yeah, man. Legato. Well, the one thing about this episode of SmackDown is that a lot of things were truncated because of the 20-minute segment at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save some for the bloodline. Everything. I think the longest match obviously was the gauntlet. 
Uh, and listen, man, the, it, it, it was like, I saw somebody say that Pretty Deadly was a comedy team. And I got to say that I didn't agree with it. I saw a review that said that you spent 20 plus minutes and then ended up putting the comedy team over. And I'm like, uh, these niggas actually working. They're not really comedy teams winning off accidents. Yeah, I mean, this isn't exactly too too cool. I'm sorry. This is not too cool. Yeah, like uh okay. But um we get to the 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 main uh the the main uh storyline here. Will Jay fall in line? <laughs> or what's the subtitle all night long, right? That's like the name of this episode. Will Jay fall in line? The decision here. So, um uh Roman comes out, Jay comes out as well. He says, you know, you know, basically uh, he he tells Kentucky that they acknowledge him. He's and he, then he says, uh, you know, Ray Ray, you know, that's not, not Ray Jay. He wants people to to answer, but Jay says it's either him or Paul Heyman. And I and I, the psychology of this, I want to ask you guys about because I'm still a little bit foggy about what the psychology here is. Was Jay playing a long game, putting Heyman in the sights to yeah. gas the woman? I I want to say yes because I was just talking to somebody about uh I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday how you know there still isn't something that's firmed up with you know did Paul put Brock in Cody's way to keep him away from Roman like and if Roman finds that out he'll be pissed right we we would think like he wouldn't want that because he's an alpha male I don't need nobody to be in my way to keep nobody right. away from me right. so I think maybe he is playing the long game here so um. He comes out and says it's either him or Paul Heyman, and, Ray, and and Roman says, "Hey, like when you're a tribal chief, you could pick your own wise man, but this is my wise man." And I I think that's key there to Jay's decision. Also, is that you're picking someone who's not family over me, the same way you got mad at me for picking Sammy over Jimmy or Sammy over or Solo a, uh, a couple months ago, right? That that was the big thing is that you're picking people that aren't family over you, the same way that that, that you pick Sammy over me. You never picked me as the person. Or as or as the guy, and he also says here, you you're you know when it's time, it's not time for you to be tribal chief yet. So Jimmy comes out. Uh, Ray uh, Roman says, you know, it took them ten years to get the Usos to WrestleMania, <laughs> which was green as fuck. Yeah, dog, he keeps one of those, doesn't he? He keeps one of those. <laughs> Jeez, man. hey, but that's our man's though. Hey, think about it. That's our man. I just want people to realize that's our man. But the way he says he said it took y'all ten years to even get there. Whenever he gets in his bag where he talks to niggas like that, I'm like, all right, you gotta you gotta chill. That's great as well. It's getting dark. It's getting dark. Uh Reigns calls Jimmy the anchor and, and Roman is the wings who rises, who who makes everyone rise up. And he says, Jay can't be a tribal chief and a twin at the same time. But he says, Remember one thing, the only person who had a problem with Jay becoming the right hand man was Jimmy himself. Now, this is where I got confused here. Was Jimmy and Jay in on this, you think? Uh, you know what part of it? Because I'm confused as to why. Okay, so he said. So Jimmy, Jimmy says he had a problem with being the right hand man. We all know this because when he came back, we knew he had a problem with it, right? What made Jay's rant about him being, you know, Mister Mister Most Likely to Succeed, Mister Mister Player of the Game, oh, Mister 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 Prom King, Mister Prom Prince, Mister Prom King. <laughs> Joshua, <laughs> I'm, I'm too busy trying to keep up with your ass. I'm glad they kept that line in there and didn't bleep it though. I, li- I like that. That, that. that was a good touch. Great, and, and, and again, great delivery from Jay, who has continued to rise above and, and really set himself apart. But my question was, why would Jay be out because he found that out? Right? You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because. He definitely saw Hell in a Cell. He definitely yeah. seen Jimmy's eyes roll over. So that is something that's interesting to me. <laughs> what do you think, Plus? I, I just I don't know why, you know, he would, like you said, like, uh, after all this, this is it? You know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I kind of saw where we were going here, but yeah, I, I don't know. Jimmy, Jimmy wasn't going to come out and say, yeah, I was in your way, nigga. I don't yeah. want you. <laughs> Verbatim? That's <laughs> No, it would, verbatim, they would roll early into the 10 o'clock news on every Fox. <laughs> it would be Fox and Friends commercials for two minutes until the, or until the news came on. Nigga, uh, what you thought it was, nigga? Now, now the 10 o'clock news. Wait. That would have had, that would have had uh, Murdoch rubbing his chin like, damn it. <laughs> Ooh, dangerous. My airwaves? Hmm, more. Should be on there, but... I, I, you know, it's it's a minor quibble, but it's a quibble that I think could be explained if explained, 
right? Where it's like, what about it made him to, and maybe somebody who's listening, maybe somebody on Discord can, can, we can have a conversation about it. I don't know if you guys had a conversation about it the night it happened, but he has this rant. And I'm, I was wondering, I was trying to put two and two together with the rant that comes before the kick where he says, you know, I've been trying to keep up with you my whole life. I get, I, and here's my thing. I get that he chose his brother. I get that he chose family because Roman wasn't going to choose family and that he's been manipulated and everyone's been telling him all this stuff, but I don't get the rant about him not kind of, um, kind of rectifying or, or talking about what Jimmy's decision to, cause Jimmy didn't seem like he was in on it <laughs> at all on the decision. Right. So I, I, I'm wondering like, what, what about like, he, you know, he, he's, 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 he's keeping on his big brother, but he says, you know what? If you're out, I'm out too. I just felt like it was like, I feel like somebody said time to go home. That's what yeah, I feel like. That's what I'm about to say. Like, it felt like, yes, everything was about getting to, we we got the, the final go home line. We've got that already put and etched in the stone. It's like, what are we going to do to get there? I and think, right, he was up I, against. Yeah. I think he got lost because as soon as the kick happens, it's, it's turbo from there because they got to get to the end of the show. But mm-hmm. that was my thought was that I think somebody told him, somebody whispered or somebody said something in only a, in a, only a way that he could have known that, hey, it's time for us to go home. We're running out of time. You can't be ranting this long because I would imagine that he would get to you never you didn't believe I could be this, but I did. And you and you let me have that moment. You let me have the moments and you shared them with me and you never complained about it when it was time, because I think that's really where he was trying to go to. But he, he was like, yo, uh, we got to get to the end. So maybe they'll explain that. It was my minor quibble with it. But I think this is one of the it's, – it's tough, right, y'all? Like, how many of these segments can we say are top five <laughs> segments yeah, in WWE yeah. history? Yeah, I mean, just I, I just keep – every time I see a segment like this involving the Usos, I just think of where they started and where they are now. And um, I saw that uh, Bully Ray, uh, you know, made a, made a statement that he feels, in his opinion, that the Usos are the greatest tag team in WWE history. And I'm – kind of inclined to agree with him at this point you know which is something i never thought i'd see myself doing say 10 years ago which is a credit to everybody involved in the storyline and honestly speaking i know it's tough i know it's absolutely tough to do so gotta retire the wrestlemania theme i'm sorry guys <sighs> fucking sucks man <laughs> i will agree with bully ray the usos i'm, I'm not sure about the but by far have regained their title back in my personal record book <laughs> of one of the best tag teams of all time. Just, just putting it out there. They've made the decision that I need to see. That, that's all. I, I, hey, I can't. Then, hey, when it's time for Ro- Roman to, to to get that Matt Tan, I can't. I'm going to have you on the show so we can talk about this. Man. Hey, no- I got to see the I got to see the Matt Tan first. He's still a, he's still homing to me. Hey, but Jimmy and Jay. <laughs> Jimmy and Jay have their proper names back down since day one. I'm not putting the ones up. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing the sideways that's one. Thing, that's their thing, though. They're the true ones. They're saying yeah. uh, they're the true uh, ones. Uh, no, no, they're, I'm sorry, they're, saying they're the real ones. I'm sorry. They're the real ones. That's their. That's their it's still. It's still got the stench on it. I'm sorry. It's still got the stench on it. Let's see. This, let's see. The, let's see the merch first. So uh, this sets up. This sets up Jay, uh, Jay kicking Roman and then them both giving him double super kicks. They kicked uh, Holo's face off. Yes. And then the show, the show ends from there. Roman has a really great moment after the show ends. Obviously, they ran out of time still, because probably because of the ranting of Jay, who <laughs> went on way too long. Um, I, I'm willing, I, I'm willing to say that 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 part probably didn't make sense because they had to go home. They probably had to end the show really quick. I'm, 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 imagine I'm, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking that's probably why it didn't make sense. Imagine the show ended on the "You deserve it" of just like panning out, and the whole yeah. crowd just chanting "You deserve it" at Roman, and he's on his knees like, "Man, yeah. oh, man." Yeah, I mean, you, but it's great digital content. It's just it's extra eyes on that. It's, it's extra, it's extra view. So now we have the Bloodline Civil War at Money in the Bank. The Usos versus Roman and Solo. That is going to be. It has the main event. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, there's no question. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Roman probably has this thing now. He's like, listen, if I'm not the main event. I'm not coming. And exactly. I, 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 I feel him. I mean, hey, man, how you gonna follow this shit, man? I mean, also last week before we leave SmackDown, he sold that last super kick like death. The yeah. double kick, that was amazing. And then Gotta doing, give credit, doing, Mark. He sold that shit like death, man. Doing I mean, shit he had to. He took two boots to the nose, his dog ass. That's, that's, why, he had to, that's why he had to drop. <laughs> doing the draw, his, his jaw cell is like always my favorite. Where it's like, it's always, like whenever, when he, remember when he sold the, 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 the Claymore and it looked yep. like he, he had to go get jaw surgery? <laughs> I was like, yo, he's selling the shit out of this Claymore, bro. He, him and Brock are like top two sellers of all time. But um, yeah. that is, to me, 
pencil that match is probably penciled in to be the main event of um of money in the bank but let's move on to raw big return on raw at the top of the show here tomorrow do you mean do you mean raw or do you mean ra- oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey listen kp not that bad the, uh, the, this week he wasn't that bad he was actually he was going he was going he was going blow for blow with uh with, with graves this week I was there, so my raw was KP free, and I, I enjoyed it being there in Cleveland it's last funny, night. It's, it's funny you miss him on the week where he's actually he literally tells Graves, he's like, "Come on, Graves, you don't like me." Like he literally says it on the show. Wow, wow. Hey, long, long, long as he knows. Blanks this week, see, when he fills in the blanks, he's all right. Then he just sometimes he just does all oh, Cody Rhodes. All oh. what well, it, it was. It's almost like he's starting to hear the criticism. To be honest with you, there were less pauses. He's still doing the the gasping and stuff like that, but there were less pauses. Um, he was on point for most of. It. He's paying attention for a lot of the show as well. Um, and he was going neck and neck with with, with Corey Graves. I mean, the, the line that I just told you about, you guys about, actually took Graves like aback. He was like, "Oh no, you can't say that," or some shit. Like he was just like he wasn't expecting KP to say, "Oh, you don't like me anyway, Graves," or some shit like that. So it was it was a nice moment. I I, I really I really um I, I really liked a lot of moments from KP. I, I would give him a six this week, whereas I would usually give him a four or a three. He was a six this week. Um, Seth Rollins comes out. He's gonna have the and here's the, here's the 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 conversation that's had so many people in the tizzy this week. Vince came in and changed the first thirty minutes of the show, and whether it was <laughs> correct or not. Oh no, Vince was changing the script. Uh, so apparently Seth was supposed to have a challenger for the open challenge this week that got scrapped and it led to, uh, have them having a segment that opened the show, which was about 10 minutes. I want to say of Finn Balor basically beating the shit out of Seth Rollins, uh, in, in retaliation for what happened with their promo in Wichita the week before. I thought this was incredibly effective. I thought it made Finn look like a killer. And I think that they're trying to legitimize, if you want to legitimize him, you have to have him do things like this and you have to have him come out of the shadows, so to speak no pun intended, of of Damian Priest and everyone else in the Judgment Day who had been lapping him rightfully ever since WrestleMania. Yeah, he looked like, he looked like the boss for the first time in a long time. He looked like he actually had a, a point to prove. He looked like he was pissed. Um, it, it felt it like it was funny as hell every time like he's walking off and he goes right back around to stomp again. It was it was amazing, man. I, I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. And whatever they had planned in place of that couldn't have been better than that. And rightfully so. I'm still not over SummerSlam seven years ago. You fucked on my shoulder. It was going to be the first. Well, obviously, I'm still the first universal champion, but you excelled. I barely got to do much. I was jobbing in 2019 or whatever whatever it was that Raw was very, very quiet for me. I'm still not over it. This has been a great resurgence for me in the Judgment Day, but you are the main reason that I had to have my down years and had people um, call for me to go to different companies, go back to Japan, <laughs> do some shit that actually makes uh, some excitement for me. You're You're the reason for that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and uh, this leads, of course, <clears throat> throughout the through line of the story this week on Raw was: Is Seth Rollins okay? Will he be okay with his match with Braun Breaker? Braun Bra- Breaker actually shows up on the show again. This NXT integration, listen, they they're getting it. Like the continuity between all these things is so cool because you start putting these people on the TV shows and you start planting seeds and you start having people wonder who these people are and maybe they'll go over to NXT and see who it is. But of course, Brown Breaker shows up on the show. Really good promo. You can tell probably the main roster people wrote it. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, Seth Rollins says he will be at NXT uh, to face Brown Breaker this week at Gold Rush, the, the first of two events. Um, and they're and they're rolling. I, I think it's going to be a really interesting match to do. But you also you you're you're giving Seth some adversity in this match against. I mean, essentially, what is a developmental talent uh, on NXT? And yeah. you're giving Braun an advantage. And there's going to have a they're going to have a better match out of this because Seth won't be able to just kind of squash him fully 100 percent healthy. This is like Ric Flair coming to the territory back in the 80s, right? Where he's beating, where he's going against the top guy in the territory. So I, I enjoy like how this whole thing has been set up. And I'm looking forward to tonight and see how that goes. Absolutely. Um, but of course, not, not without uh, the big return, of course, being uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Um, he comes out to face the Miz, beats him in four minutes. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm going to tell you right now, Miz is not H at all. <laughs> Miz is winless in 2023. We are halfway through the year, folks. He's he's so not H. And listen, it's time for him to give back. <laughs> oh, oh mi- hashtag Miz gives back is in full effect right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's time to give back. Uh, Tommaso looks great. He looks fantastic. Hopefully he, he'll have a, a cleaner bill of health. I think what we're looking for here now is probably the way coming back with uh, Indy looking like she's probably 
close to being a full strength pretty soon. Um, and and Johnny Gargano back now. He's pulled, he was advertised for this week, but he was left off the show. Um, what what are we seeing here? Are, are, are we hearing he's supposed to go heel? What, what, what do you think, you guys? Well, I think there was a digital exclusive with Champa um, where he ends it on. You know, if you want to do something, you got to do it yourself. So it kind of speaks to me as if, yeah, they're reuniting DIY and maybe they're going heel. Because if you were not going heel, then maybe you want to have Gargano in front of his hometown crowd. Because the same kind of situation happened last year when I was in Cleveland. And we all thought Gargano was going to appear, you know, in Cleveland. But that actually happened in Toronto a few weeks later. So mm-hmm. granted, he was still a face at that time. But I think now they kept him off of his hometown show because they want to turn him heel. And that wasn't going to happen here in Cleveland. Do you think that all the way turns heel? Obviously, they were heel in NXT when they had Theory with them. Theory's not going to be with them this time. But do you think all of them, like Candice, I would love to see Poison Pixie back. Obviously, Indy would also follow suit because they would be a great tag team if they do go the tag team route with Candice and Indy once again. But it would be full heel, right? Not just DIY going heel and Candice and and uh, Indy going, well, well, I'm not so fully there just yet. Yeah, because have- Dexter needs to be a heel, man. I don't get Dexter as a, as a face anyway. Yeah, you definitely have to do that. That's a huge faction too. But I, I would, I shudder to think that you'd have to kind of, you'd have to break the judgment day up a bit. And and that leads me to my next point. Finn and Damien are not seeing eye to eye. And mm-hmm. it's clear that they're not seeing eye to eye. And that's another through line of the story uh, on Raw this week. The, the, the fucking judgment day are like all over this show. <laughs> Every single hour they're on, they're on this show. Um, Finn cuts a promo. Uh, he says that, you know, basically he's he's going to, he it, you know, this is his show. And he says that uh, he, he he said the fans are going to love to sing that song so much they're going to sing it at, his, at Seth's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, and, and, and Dominic completely whiffs a promo asking for a six-man tag match. And that was their promo. <laughs> <laughs> Those Ohio boos were different, though. I will say, like, he, he it was hard for him to get a, get bearing on that. Like, they were killing him on that on that uh on that on that segment but later on the show finn and finn says to him and damien are they're all right and i'm like yeah jd has to join this group right yeah because even that may plant some more you know seeds of doubt within the jd so i I can see that addition it's an easy addition too i wonder who would get booted in between finn and damien though because obviously all of us love the amount of praise and love that damien has got since backlash obviously miles miles ahead of what anybody could have expected a couple of years ago and especially when he was united states champion and right now people are more than interested to seeing world heavyweight gold on damian priest but there's got to be the way that you get there obviously but i wonder who would be kicked out of the judgment day edge style between finn or damian it's damian it's damian it's yeah. time it, they, they've invested a lot in him i think they saw what he did in the main event at backlash and they like that um he has been a project for this company for the last two years uh and well shit longer than that three years yeah Uh, yeah. he's been a project for this company for a long time it's time to get that return on investment i think that he could realistically be a way better baby face than he was before he turned Mm -hmm. heel um and i think that you need to that you need to you you should probably keep finn as as a heel for 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 a while because he was a baby face for so damn long and he's just so great in this role um i would turn damien here if if they choose to do that i think that the 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 um I think that the slow burn here works for me in a lot of ways because this is a group that was built on betrayal. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, you have to have that betrayal element still there. And, but the question is, y'all, how will Rhea and Dominic handle that? And I think that's the the, the most intriguing part of, of this whole dichotomy between the group here. So we'll, we'll see what, how that shakes out in the coming weeks because I think Money in the Bank will probably be um, a, a, a turning point because if, if Damien gets that briefcase... All gloves are off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 So it is going to be interesting. And, you know, when that JD chair shot comes, you already know how it's going to go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had a squash match between uh, Caden Carter and Katana Chance. We talked about that a little bit earlier. They looked really great here. And, and again, I know there's arguments. I know there, there's conversation that happens in our Discord about this team. They are fulfilling a role that has been needed for the tag division for the women if they're going to try and build it up. Get them some wins, make them look strong, put them in, in situations to succeed. I think they got a good reaction last night. I think Cleveland was kind of fucking with the offense. Let's see, let's see where it goes. Um, I'm skipping past this end of sheer part because I'm pretty sure A plus went Please. to the bathroom. Please, Jinder Mahal looks like Barry Gordy. Jinder <laughs> Mahal looks like a sax fashion consultant. Jinder Mahal looks like I don't know, man. He looks he looks like a, somebody said contestant on The Bachelor <laughs> last night in the chat, and I and I agree. 
<laughs> Why can't he get uh, his four pins off? Why can't he get his fits off? Nah, fuck that. He, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. I, I'm already like, when is the India P- PLE so we can get this over with? Like, like when is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm tapping my fucking watch right now. When is the India PLE, bro? Like, it, let's just get it over with, bro. Like, just put me on my misery here. Uh, we get the Logan Paul segment, of course, as everyone guessed, he is going to be in Money in the Bank. That's big money right there, having Logan Paul in the O2. Um, and, I mean, you know, he talks about Cleveland being terrible and how he's going to be a winner. Is there a world where Logan Paul gets the Money in the Bank check? <laughs> oh, but why I, didn't he earn it? Why didn't he do the qualifier? I oh, almost I mean, feel like, man. I almost feel like you're you, I almost feel like you got to do it. I almost feel like you got to give him the briefcase. Like you got to give it to because think about the opportunities. Think think of the possibilities. You know what I mean? He's making all these major appearances, briefcase and tow. I, I think you got to do it. So I think you have to pull the trigger. And also, it doesn't become an overbearing presence on television where you're always wondering, oh, God, what are they going to do with this damn briefcase? Because if yeah. you put that on LA Knight, it becomes an albatross. And I love LA Knight. But seriously, let's be honest. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you you have you have him disappear off TV for two three months. He pops up with their briefcase. You, it's not a, it's not a David Arquette moment. It's so I'm willing to say that. I'm willing to say that it's not David a Arquette David. A buckshot lariat. Fuck him. Yeah, it, it it it's it's not that type of moment. It is a moment that I feel like he he can go. But I feel like he needs to start facing more people that are, you know, that that are that are better or or of the same level of of, of Seth Rollins. You know what I'm saying? And sure, yeah. I, I think that whoever beats Logan Paul with a championship, and and again, they are stressing that you can go for any championship. They're not just, they're saying a champion, not the WWE champion or the undisputed champion. They're saying a championship. He can go for any championship. Yeah, essentially. And hey. I mean, we saw last year with, with Austin Theory, he he wanted to <laughs> he wanted to go for the U.S. title, and that made people mad. So, I, but I mean, you know, I I think that whoever beats a Logan Paul, you you make him that shit eating heel that you know doesn't show up every single week, but you have to chase him. You have him show up on his podcast and beat him up and make him accept the match or something like that. Like you can do some really cool shit with him, and that's why I think that the briefcase should probably go to him, to be honest. So what you're saying is he's cashing in on Gunther. Big call. Big call. Wow. Oh, you want to make the internet mad? <laughs> that would be crazy. But you don't, you don't want a baby, you don't want a baby face, uh, you don't want a baby face gunner though. But Gunther, yeah. <laughs> but um you could do it to theory. And that's how you, you know what I'm saying? You could do you could do the theory, and then that opens up the the possibilities, and you put Logan on SmackDown, which is already star heavy. It's a heavy show with stars, and you know, he he, he could be on Friday night. So that's my thought right now. Right now, I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm thinking, Logan Paul, right now. Um, you got Matt Riddle versus Luger Kaiser. I love I, I like the match a lot. Um, I like that this is why Gunther has like the lackeys in his in his uh crew because you need people that can be beat instead of 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 Gunther. Yes. Yes. And uh, good lackeys too. It's not like Lou, it's not it's not like Lou is Huff. He's 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 clearly got a lot of respect in the company. Obviously we're gonna stay away from Giovanni Vinci for for a little bit of time, but Giovanni would be more than willing to, you know, have those types of matches. But they're both good. I'm I'm thinking Giovanni's probably really injured though. I'm I'm thinking he's, he's probably, Where is he? I think he's actually injured. I'm I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, I thought you said like he was in active duty in like Italy or something. I didn't know where he was like at for a second. <laughs> I didn't know. Nah, Riddle, Riddle, Riddle fucked up his uh didn't Riddle fuck up his ankle or something like that? He did, yeah, he left those those horrible screams. I don't want to hear no nigga from Imperium yelling like that ever again. <laughs> Uh, then we have uh, we have we got to see Maxine Dupree in uh in action, Woo! in action. Raw Staples, she, she might be good. She might yeah, be good. Might be. I, I haven't heard people pop for a suplex like that in a long time. She, she might be good. I, I, me from two years ago, me probably me from a year ago would uh would be a very upset with what they're doing with the Viking Raiders. But if they're having fun. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And then on top of the Maxine Dupree stuff, I did see two actually pretty good clips from from the uh, After the Bell podcast uh, of her talking about, you know, her her uh, her way making to the WWE, just trying it out, giving it a go. And it actually ended up working. And obviously she has a big background in, 
and dance and entertainment and so on and so forth. That's what probably one of the episodes I do have to check out from after the bell, just seeing what her story is. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good episode too. I had it on in the background uh, a couple weeks ago. It was great. Um, you had a nothing match with Rhea Ripley versus Natalia, uh, <laughs> but they planted seeds as Raquel Rodriguez says that that wasn't right. Rhea and Raquel have a face off which leads to the Money in the Bank qualifying matchup between Raquel Rodriguez versus Trish Stratus, which Becky Lynch hits a, my bad dog, and accidentally gets her disqualified. <laughs> Big Rock uh, she, on heel lately? I mean, Liv's not around. Uh, who, who? Raquel? Raquel, yeah. No, I, I, it looks like it's, it's, it's Raquel versus uh, Rhea at SummerSlam. I think that's okay. where you're going. Yeah. I think that's what you do. You've effectively put her out of money in the bank, so there's no question that she's not gonna she's gonna be in it, but she doesn't need it, to be honest with you. Um, you have her without her tag team partner, and you're kind of restarting her again as a singles. Um, I would and they put her right in Rhea's uh Rhea's face here. So I would say two of your top matches being Rhea versus Raquel and Becky versus Trish would be crazy for Detroit. Oh, for sure. I mean, I just think there'll be like an inverse as Rhea will be cheered crazy. You know, Raquel should bring up the fact that, you know, she was she wanted to win the Royal Rumble in her hometown, but, you know, Rhea stole that from her. So, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. And not for nothing, she was beating Trish's ass on Monday. I was Man. like, damn, watch her neck. Rag, <laughs> ragdolling Trish. And that's when I said, oh, Trish is probably going to come out, come out on top of this somehow. She was ragdolling Trish's ass. It's working for me, though. Trish's yeah. run here is really working for me. And I'm enjoying it. And shout out to uh, Zoe Stark, too, man, a.k.a. the Z-Look Jamaican. <laughs> he look Jamaican is crazy. Boot oh, that classic. Him. Boot him right now. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it is, it is, it is crazy to see though, man. I'm, I'm still in my 2003 watches. 20 years prior, she's wrestling Gail Kim, Molly Holly, Ivory, and now, and now, 20 years into the future, she's doing great matches on Raw, man. As much as the thank you Trish thing is is a, is a slogan and a staple right now. It actually does receive a lot. It should receive a lot of credit and a lot of praise. Yeah. Um, we had the continuing storyline between Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bronson Reed. I'm enjoying this mid card feud. I I'm loving the mid cardness of this feud. <laughs> yeah. Right. If people really are, oh they are though the, the tsunami is over. People stand up for that shit. Like somebody's about to run in the match. I'm like, why are people standing up? Oh, it's for this. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 funny how how much that elimination chamber match got Bronson over. Yes. And the way that they use him sparingly, it, it, it does make a lot of sense why that's so over because they love to see that. Uh, they, they book him kind of like they should have booked Vader back in the 90s. Yes. Um, it's another Vader reference in the show. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but again, it is kind of odd that Bronson is not in the match. That's my only concern right now is that, like, why is he not in the Money in the Bank match? Why is he beating people that are in the match is, is my question. That's odd. That is odd. Like I, I'm one, I'm wanting it to make a lot of sense here, but we'll we'll see. This is inevitably inevitably going to be a triple threat match uh, next week, probably with the three of these guys. Maybe for the money in the bank spot, whoever gets pinned is out the match. I would hate for that to be Ricochet, but uh, we'll we'll see because it seems as though to me Ricochet is kind of getting a little bit of edge. Like he's telling Nakamura, "Don't you ever fucking interrupt me again, nigga. Or I'll beat the shit out your ass, man. Don't cut Ricochet off on the highway, you damn." Yeah, the way he was talking. It, it, but again, Ricochet with Edge, I like it. You know what I mean? I, and, and I think that, that they need to give him a little bit more Edge going into it. So maybe him getting booted out and and actually actively facing Nakamura is is the is the play here. Um, main event time: Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens versus Judgment Day. Cody Rhodes is over as hell. The, he comes out what three times in the show? In the right. <laughs> right. I mean, every woe delivered too, man. I mean, every single one of them. He came out at the beginning at the at the at the rev and said, "Yeah, I accept," and then went back. <laughs> I was just like, "What?" <laughs> he looked very much like a presidential candidate at the top of the stage too with Kathy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like it, it looked crazy to have him come out that many times during the show. But again, he is your top guy on on Monday Night Raw. Uh, not much to say here. Uh, they went about fourteen minutes here. Crowd goes nuts for the for the Owens hot tag. Crowd yeah. was nuts for the Dominic inclusion. What was it like live in the in the uh, in in the uh, was it Fielder's Bank House? What's it called? Um, the, the Rocket Mortgage Field House. So, Rocket Mortgage, yeah. So no, I mean we we seem like we've stumbled over a new chant. Hopefully, it carries over during Dom matches. It was Dom's a pussy. I don't know if it made it over uh, the air on USA, but Dom's a pussy was heard. 
it heard was hurt, it was heard all throughout the match. So that they were hot the whole entire main event. It was one of those old school main events where people are standing up uh, halfway because of course they they know it's the end of the show, but halfway because they're really fucking into the match. So that was like I, I enjoyed seeing that toward the end of the show. But um, yeah, it was man, it was it was a hot ass reaction for Kevin's hot, hot tag and Cody's hot tag. So it was just it was just they were on fire that whole time. Yeah, and, and and again, you had the, the some some really cool shit there. You had a uh, you had the the flip over Rhea onto Dom uh, from Zayn, Zayn with that with the fire. Of course, I haven't even spoken on the the Rage of Holic storyline here that they were oh, trying to do this God. week. But it seems very clear that this is a family friendly team, and I, I'm like, they're gonna go to the they're gonna go to a therapist, and I think that's gonna be. <laughs> oh no. They're gonna go to a therapist. I'm I'm quite sure of it that they're gonna have a segment where he has to go to anger management. And I think that I, you know what? I think that him and, and Zayn are probably writing that right now. I could see that they're, they're probably writing that whole storyline right now. So we, we'll we'll see how how that kind of shakes out. But um, as far as a match, like they are clearly over. Nothing has changed. They are they are two of the most over. Well, shit, the three most over people on the show versus the biggest heels on the show. Uh, Crossroads finishes. Uh, Priest uh, Dom gets the fucking shit kicked out of him. He gets the haluva kick, the stunner. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and then uh, he gets a crossroads, and then uh, and then he he, he uh, the crossroads finishes uh, priest uh, at around fourteen minutes. Great end. Uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that Finn didn't take the fall here. He's he's still the number one contender. But I don't know why Dominic. Did, well, actually, no, I know why Dominic didn't get pinned because he has a match against Cody. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that pinfall happen yet. So uh, Damien had to take the pin there. Yeah, no, it was smart. That was smart. I, I enjoyed that finish thoroughly. Enjoyed the match overall. Absolutely. What do you think about it? In, and it kept it. I'm about to say, and it kept interest in London, just like I, just like how you said, Cody and Dom is going to be, and Cody and Dom is going to be something that's highly exciting. I'm excited to see how Dom pisses off London. He's pissed off more oh, than God. enough. He for he pissed off Puerto Rico more than enough. Uh, pisses off the entire United States of America. Let's bring it to O2, man. Let's bring it to see see, see how it goes over there. Yeah, and, and you gave, I mean, you gave the crowd something to go out on. You gave them a really happy ending to go out on. Say, KO and Sammy, they've been taking a, a couple losses here and there, but they needed a win like this against the Judgment Day to go into their match against Pretty Deadly, and uh, they're working double duty every single week, so it, it's cool to see them on TV every single week here. And uh, yeah, that was raw. I thought it was a great show. I, I, I thought it was a really good show. Kind of It advanced a lot of storylines, and as we go into Money in the Bank, uh, we have a lot of really, uh, really cool things being set up here and a lot of really great matches. And, and again, like we are literally a week away. So next week on the show, we'll be doing our predictions for uh, Money in the Bank. Uh, Mills will be back, but I want to thank you two guys for taking time out of your busy days to to join us on the show and talk about uh, Saucy Santana's uh, tour writer, <laughs> hospitality writer. Thank you for having us, my brother. Anytime. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having us. I did want to end it with a with a with a quick. Uh, I mean, it might be controversial. It might be a little bit controversial, but I don't know, man. This money in the bank theme might need to be just might need to be retired, guys. You guys like money, 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 money. <laughs> Let's just put the Baca not nice money in the bank and let's call it a day. Uh, you can't, he's a human trafficker, bro. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. I, oh well. <laughs> good point. He's a human trafficker. You can't do. It. You need to put. So you need to put Sprinter on it. Sprinter needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Central <laughs> Dave. Shout out to Central C and Dave. It's just Dave. Yep, it's just Dave. It's uh, Dave. Shout out to them too. Sprinter needs to be. That's that song. It, the, the video is streamed uh, almost thirty million times in in two weeks. That's crazy. That's the, that's the song with the hundred eaters line, right? Yes. Yo, who who can be the hundred eaters like on the? On the poster for Money in the Bank, man. Who can we have coming out hey. the Who are the hunted Eaters getting in? <laughs> he said his gun is a man eater like he's Nelly Foot, Nelly Foot, Nelly Foot Toto. Yes, so. sir. <laughs> hey. Hey, he was hey, he was barring up, nigga. Come on, man. They need to show us. I bet I bet Santan Dave was gonna be at Money in the Bank <laughs> at the O2. Yeah. Shit, oh, man. Yeah. Exactly, bro. But Thank you, A+. Plus. Thank you, MC, for being on the show. Thank, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next week on The A Show uh, with me and Mills and our predictions for Money in the Bank uh, for next weekend. So uh, stay tuned. See you guys later. Peace. <laughs>